We know you're listening. You're crazy. We know, we know who's watching. Yeah, nobody tells me, but I just sort of, uh, I can feel the vibes. You can feel the vibes. That's right. <laughs> Okay, let's do this thing. We've got a we've got a big day ahead of us today. We're going to talk about Avatar 2.0. Um, hopefully, we'll answer some of the uh, big questions. Vasse, we're you can't raise your hand already. We just started. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm I can't just going to poke him. I'm looking for an emote. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about Avatar 2.0. We've got a lot to cover on our own first. Uh, we'll give you sort of everything that we know and that we can tell you safely. And then um, we have a bunch of your questions from yesterday, which we've been preparing for. And, of course, we'll take more questions as they um, happen in real time. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Uh, so I guess we should just go ahead and get started because we have a lot to cover. Kara, did you want to go first? Where's Kara? Finished. Wow, of course. Oh, my goodness. There she is. Kara, we're ready, <laughs> we're ready for you. So if you come up to the front and help us all catch up. <laughs> That's a catch-up joke, everybody. Uh, all right. No. All right. You should Green make subtitles for that one. <laughs> all right. All right, uh, Kara, let's uh, give us the sauce here. Let's do it. Kara's mic isn't working. Okay. Kara's mic not be working. Kara, uh, if you can hear me. But you think we can't hear you. All right, so Kara is going to pantomime oh, Avatar 2.0 changes. Um, <laughs> so this is going to be... Oh, dear. <laughs> She'll be back in a second. Yeah, sure, right. Um, Archer, you're right on time. Interpretive of updates. That's, that's what we're going to get. Anyway, while we're waiting, some important news. Um, my hockey team won the Stanley Cup last night, so you can all uh, oh, congratulate me for that because I clearly had something to do with it. Being some three thousand miles away. Handedly. That's right. Excellent. Who won? What's hockey? The St. Louis Blues. Come on, <laughs> ah. St. Louis. Yeah, that's right. Is that even a town? <laughs> Do they even know what hockey is? I'm sure they do. It's That's what people there's ask. Nothing about. else to do there. That the sharks. That is <laughs> the most cool. There's a cool arch there. There is a cool arch. It's huge. It's the football math capital of the world. It is the best. Wow. That's Missouri, not not St. Louis. But there's only one, so they only have half the McDonald's menu. That's right. Oh cool. Hey, is it working now? Uh, yeah. Yay. Good time. Hey. Poor St. Louis yeah. was getting the brunt end of, a, <laughs> of an angry community for some reason. More well deserved. It's uh, like a, a right. goat that you put all the sins into and then exile into the wilderness. That is exactly how St. Louis was founded. So. <laughs> it's like the Australia of America. Okay. Kara. That's where llamas came from. <laughs> um, I may need some help with agenda because I am in VR. <laughs> <laughs> I see you over there. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so, Kara, uh, we're going to get started. So, the recent update to give more, get more release updates is what you're going to talk about first, talking about copy pasta with the scripts. And then there's a link that I'm going right. to go ahead and share that you wanted to share. Yeah. So, we recently have an update. I think it was yesterday. Uh, the biggest thing that is that for the experienced creators, you should be able to copy uh, components now from the scene objects list. And I know the for those who are copying and pasting the same script, you know, audio or lighting, um, this would make your workflow easier. Um, so you don't have to manually, re, you know, reset or put in the same script and the same components, pr properties, parameters um, for every item in your scene. So I think that's great. Um, the other thing is we fixed a couple of issues with, that happens when you're editing an experience. I believe there was a crash that would happen when you are editing a scene with um, objects that have joints, so that should be fixed now. Um, so if anyone has been hit by that problem, um, you can try it again and it should work now. And that's it for yesterday's release. Okay, cool, so we can uh, move on. Um, so sort of a, uh, and a good segue is we have the uh, Avatar team uh, here today and we wanna to introduce them all. So um, that'll be uh, all of you in order, I guess, would be Kara, Stretch, Nix, Paulo, Dave, P, and G, but you can introduce yourselves. Um, so go for it. All right. 
So I'll start. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Kara. I think most of you know me. I'm the product manager for the Avatar team, and I also deal with a lot, with a lot of the um, updates for the store. Um, so if you have any questions, um, please come to me. Oh, and also documentation. <laughs> if you have any documentation requests, um, please come to me. And Kara wow. just got a promotion. Okay, I thought more people were going to be excited. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, yeah, all right. Yeah, excited, yeah. More crickets. I'm done. I'm done oh. today. Okay. Oh, for you. <laughs> <laughs> you just got crickets from me as well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think so we have next is um, Sean. Um, I think a lot of you know Sean, but Sean, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, Sean, I'm the, uh, I'm the character lead, uh, avatar lead, engine, and engine lead. So, um everybody i think a lot of you know me so i'm around i'm in here i come to community stuff i do stuff i make avatar stuff yeah dave or paolo uh, i'm always hiding out on the dev grid but uh i've been working on avatar 2 uh for a while now um that's pretty much all i've been doing uh lazy Oh. This is uh, not on the Avatar team, but... Um, okay, uh, Paolo? There we go. Paolo! Hey, can you guys hear me? Paolo. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm the blue guy of the team, and I do UI stuff. Most of the time, I do some VR stuff, too, and I jump around helping other teams sometimes, and I break stuff for you guys to complain. <laughs> I'm, I have many, many users in this team, and I try to tell poor jokes. All right. And uh, Z, Z is flying. Hey, everyone. How's it going? You guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Hey, hey guys. I'm Z. Uh, I'm the tech art lead on the Sensor Studios team, but I help the avatar team with all the stuff that has to deal with uh, any of the assets that's needed to, uh, that's related to avatars, including the actual setup of the assets and integration and a bunch of other stuff related to that. Awesome. All right. Cool. Thanks, team. Um, next up, we, uh, we're we going to get into the meat, so everybody get ready, and um, you know, feel free to laugh at the jokes that the team is telling if you want. I mean, we just need a little morale booster there. Um, first, Kara and Stretch will be, uh, will be going over some things, so um, let's get started, you guys. Uh, starting with coming early September, Kara? Oh, we can't hear Kara. Can we hear Kara? Yes. Oh, I yeah, you were going to. That's weird. Um, the initial features, um, what this what we call V1, um, and Shetch and I can't talk about what these things are. Um, so, for, you know, first thing is, you know, for sure we're gonna give you a new avatar skeleton. There's gonna be a new avatar mesh and skeleton as a default avatar within the within you know within Sansar um, with new capabilities in terms of editing. Um, you know, one thing we promise is that this is a you know. The first and last time we're going to change the skeleton. So, you know, moving forward, this is going to skeleton. We're going to keep in Tensor for life. Um, yeah. So why don't we go into, like, you know, what's possible? Um, uh, you know, with this new change, we're going to enable you to, as we said before, um, for those who have been in pro previous product meetups, um, we're going to have this few new feature called bone deformation, which should allow users to be able to, pick and change the um, the shape of the avatar more directly by picking on the bones. Uh, maybe uh, uh, Sean here can give more information about how that works from a technical level. Sure. So 
um, we're working on a lot of things for Avatar 2.0. The reason, and the the reason that we went to change the skeleton, in part, big part of it, was to support um, own deformation. We didn't feel like the the previous skeleton. You guys have used the previous skeleton. You used the previous body. The body, the skin, the skeleton itself, they're not really set up that well to do deformation. And the reason for that is that they're too stylized to start. Like the male avatar, for instance, is a bodybuilder. He is uh, huge. It's hard to then deform that into anything else. Like it's hard to take that down. It's hard to take that up. It's hard to, to move, move that, that skin around. It's hard to do that with bones. Um, 50-year-old bodybuilder. <laughs> anyway, that may be the case. Uh, so, we, we wanted to go... The face as well. The face is already kind of has style to it. It has, it has prominent features. Um, and so, uh, we wanted to... Also, the skeleton, another problem with current skeleton, it has a lot of bones. And people who have skinned against it, you know it has something like 239 bones. It's got a lot of bones. It makes it really hard to skin against. It makes it hard to get the face skinned properly, um, especially. So uh, mm. the goals with the new avatar that we're trying to accomplish with the new skeleton is simplify the skeleton. It has, as you can correct me here, it's something along the lines of, you can give me the exact number, it's 170 bones, I believe. Yeah, that's about um, right for that skeleton, yep. 170 bones. A um, lot less bones in the face. Uh you know, simplifying the rest of the skeleton, <laughs> um, simplifying the skin, um, and uh, making it so that we're making the, the base mesh much more neutral so that you can more easily uh, deform it into different shapes. So you can make it thin, you can make it fat, you can make the chest big, you can, make, you can manipulate the face. So a big problem we have now with the faces is with the blend shapes. Um, the, the blend shapes in the face, the, the vertex, and people call them different things, the vertex morphs in the face. Um, they make it, you can't do everything you want to do with it. You can't move the eyes. You can't, uh, you can't move the cheekbones really well. And when you move those things like accessories or, or um, clothing that's on the face, it doesn't move with it. If you put a beard on and then you start morphing with the, the blend shapes, the beard gets lost because the beard doesn't know to move with the blend shapes because it, it would have to have all those same blend shapes in it, which makes it a real big authoring problem. And so we wanted to move to a, a bone-based deformation so that when you, when you change the jaw, when you change the cheeks, when you widen the eyes or move them up a little bit, you know, take your ears down, take your ears up, Things move with it. Your beard will move. Your, you know, if it's skin to that face, like things are gonna, things are gonna work hopefully. Um, and so we're we're doing a lot of those changes um, to make it so that you can make really expressive avatars, really, uh, really cool looking avatars, good looking avatars, variety of avatars. I know a lot of people have complained that. Uh, all the avatars in Sansar look like their cousins. Uh, all the base avatars, when you when you when you change the face, you, you can't be expressive as as expressive as you'd like. And so those are, that's the kind of feedback we're hearing. That's the kind of feedback we're trying to address, and that's where we're going with the avatar. We know that uh, Avatar 2.0, this changeover. You know, we know that it's going to be hard. We know that um, this skeleton is is quite a bit different than our current skeleton, especially the male version. We're, for the male and the female, we're shrinking. We're, we're, we're going to get them to be the same shoulder height to start with this with this version. Now that we have scaling of the avatars, if you want to make your avatar tall or you want to make your avatar shorter, you can do that through you know the scaling of the avatars like I'm tiny now. And so we don't need them to be different heights. And so we want to uniform the heights so the male, female, you know, they're changing their heights a bit. Let's say the number of bones in the face is going down, the way those bones are done in the face is going down. We're changing the body to make it so that the body can be morphed. Um, these are all changes, and we've decided that it's, it's a big change, it's a drastic change. It's really tough for us to take the current avatars that are out there, the current rig clothing especially that's out there, and transfer it. We did, Z and I did some exploration on trying to get the current avatars to to work against the new skeleton um it's really hard and we didn't think that we could achieve a level through auto rigging or auto changing to get that to look good and 
if we carry the current skeleton, like we, if we carrying the current skeleton forward forever, is, it presents another problem, which is every time we change something, every time we want to add a new feature like jump or crouch, we have to do it against both skeletons forever, um, potentially. And so with the community where we're at, with the size of the, the user base in Sansar, we decided to, and this kind of came out last week, I think, decided to, you know, put a, put a, put a pin in, in the current avatars and try and push forward with the new avatars with a really good base, a really strong way for people to, a much easier to use skeleton, uh, much stronger base to, to start with. Um, Z has done a ton of work to get that base to be really strong, something that we can make evergreen it's going to support us going all the way forward and um that's that's the decision that we made um mm -hmm. we're going to be doing um a lot of work to uh like uh, in terms of what's still going to work so we think that we can make the md stuff work like we're working on this scaling translation feature so that you can scale up manipulate md for md clothing we're going to try and provide a baseline transformation from the current uh clothing body to the new body so for instance like if the, if the female is uh 90 of the current female or something like that and um you know it's translated such that the neck hole is a little bit down we're gonna try and get that as like a base transformation on the md clothing that way when you apply md clothing from the past it'll kind of mostly fit and then you can simulate it'll pop out over the avatar and everything will still look pretty good and then obviously new md clothing made against the new avatar will be against new avatars, it's going to look great. Um, so MD clothing, which is like 95% of the store clothing, I think it should be fine. For animations, we're working on a feature right now for runtime retargeting of animations. So we think we can make the current animations that you guys have on the store work with the new skeletons. So a lot of the dances on the store, a lot of the emotes on the store, a lot of the animations on the store are like things like dances and stuff. And a lot of that stuff, the exact positioning of the bones, uh, you know, is is important, but not super important. It's not like we're eating an apple or something where the end effector has to be exactly on. But the retargeting should, I think, do a, a pretty good job against um, doing that cha that transformation. Somebody's trying to test their mic. Um, I'm just talking. Just I'll keep talking. Uh, so that we think we can. That'll be fine. Uh, accessories. Accessories. Accessories we think we can make, you know, those are those are statically rigged. Those are going to go into the, the positions on the body and the hands. Um, That's epic, too. Is that epic? <laughs> Everyone be epic. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's happening. It's actually, I can be kind of like a routine here. So it's like, mm hmm. <laughs> It's that's a space radiation. Um, so, uh, yeah, animations, MD clothing, accessories. I think we can get those things to work pretty well against the new skeletons. The rig stuff is the tough part, and um, we we the plan is to provide. Kara can maybe talk more about what we plan to do for upgrades and for mm -hmm. and for um, yes, and for uh, you know. Compensation, I don't know how to describe it, but... Um, right, right. Um, um, yeah. Before, before you talk, I'll be talking more about some of the... We'll talk more about the technical stuff and questions on technical stuff, but that's the baseline, right. and, and the features we're trying to get for this, like I said, deformation. The second one we're working on to support this new thing is, and it's a Astro feature a lot, is um, textures. So mm -hmm. texture, texture as like a first-class citizen. So you upload a texture as a resource, that texture, when I say textures, I'm most talking about, um,
it depends if so one of on cover so our of this new is even an avatar based on the bone deformation changes that you created. So if you, you know you wanted a character, the avatar editor, you changed you know the face using the, the, the you know the blend shapes and also the, the bone deformation tools as well as the body. Maybe you made it like you know look like a chubby avatar. You can actually sell that in the store. So if you sell in the store and a user bought that item, then they will also have that those capabilities. So if they bought that chubby avatar, they can use the same bone deformation tools and adjust that further um, of course with um with licensing permissions um based on the creators choosing um yeah. so so in terms of in terms of how we're doing it like we want to you know get our tech in place make sure it's working well before we get it out to everybody you know we make sure the textures work and make sure everything works then probably the first thing that's going to come online for for creators is going to be the texture side of things so you can upload textures for our avatar um mm -hmm. Uploading textures for custom avatars is a little bit of a tricky problem for for because the UVs have to match. So maybe you want to do. Some, we're, we're thinking about that problem a lot, and and uh, it's it's tough. Like if you have a custom avatar, this this frog, maybe it has one texture for the whole frog. Let's say um, that UV space is going to be unique to that custom avatar, and so it's really tough to like apply freckles to this frog from generic freckles. Um, a lot of the, the like if you're doing freckles for uh, a skin for our for our base avatar we're going to give you the uvs so you, you the, the face is unwrapped into a flat texture and where the freckles go it's pretty important or where the eye makeup is a big one where that eye makeup goes is really important on that uv space and so um we imagine lots of stuff against our base avatars um it's gonna be a little mm -hmm. trickier for custom avatars um but that's that's where we're trying to get those things going yeah um, a question back to, you were talking that you're going to shrink the male avatar to f be more in line with the female or vice versa. Yeah, I think it's, Z, Z, you can talk to that a little bit. Is it, it's kind of meeting in the middle a little bit, right? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's actually the female closer to the, I mean, yes. uh, the, the female goes up. Yay, uh, okay, because yeah, that will sync it with um, the size of Second Life for the builders now in Second Life. Part of the issue is the discrepancy in the two female sensors mm -hmm. sizes and all the work that has to go into converting their items to come into sensor. So that in itself will make a big difference. The second thing is, will MD scale width separately than length? Because what's going to happen when the avatar gets moved up, like this dress I have on that's MD, mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot shorter, but you don't necessarily need it wider. So that has to scale separately. <sighs> So the capabilities we have from MD are a little limited in that sense. Um, the uh, they only support uniform scaling. Okay. So they don't support non-uniform scaling. So some of the dresses, pants, different things made for the female will need to be. A, they a probably need to be touched up. The length, yeah. For the length, yeah, that might change, yeah. Okay. Just yeah. Curious. Thanks. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, for that, it might become a, a, a top. <laughs> it might become a trend. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my, my chat window went way over here. All right. That's my chat window back. All right. Um, so, yeah, like I said texture is probably coming online first, then looking at doing you know, more of the bone deformation, then maybe blend shapes, and then looking at doing how we can, how we can do the bone deformation stuff. Um, and so that's how we're going to kind of roll that out. One thing we're looking at doing for custom avatars in particular is pre-morph skeletons. So for instance, um, if you have a custom avatar and it's kind of like a monkey man avatar and it has long arms and it has shorter legs and, and maybe a differently sized torso, the, the, the thing we'd like to do there is you morph that skeleton in Maya to get what you want. You skin your stuff against that skeleton, against that morph skeleton so it can look great. You know, you've got the long arms, so you get really good non-stretch textures on the arms so you don't have to do some kind of weird uv stuff for you know expecting people to stretch the arms out to make the monkey man and so you pre-morph that you take our skeleton you pre-morph it you bring it in and then we do animation retargeting against that to give you animations that kind of work well we know that the best way to get that kind of skeleton to to be great would be to um allow you to upload all the locomotion animations jump animations everything like a big animation package we'd like to get there as well but to start you know 
allowing you to import a pre more skeleton and us retargeting it, I think, is a will allow some really mm -hmm. cool stuff. Uh, and that's kind of where runtime that runtime uh, animation retargeting starts coming in. And this, uh, you know, us supporting morph skeletons allows people to import morph custom skeletons and stuff like that. So I think that's going to be really cool. Um, that's that's going to be coming online, coming online, and then we need to get this good skeleton in place first. We got to get this mesh in place first. We got to get this to make it so that you know more creators come and and um, we get something that's easier to work with and that can support all these features that we want to support. Yay. Yeah. So. And one thing I'd also like to flag in case I wasn't very clear, um, as we roll this out and we're we're gearing to roll the first iteration of After 2.0 in early September. Um, as we roll that out, um, a lot of the bone deformation, um, you know, features that we've just discussed will be mainly focused on the face. So the first roll will be like being able to adjust the face, um, but we are also working on the body, so you can also adjust the body. But that may come, that may come in a later release. Yeah. The face, the face is critical, and as part of that too, we're going to have uh, presets for the faces, so you can start with a beautiful face and morph off of it um, or if you're really great you can start with the base face and morph off of it but presets is a big important part of it um, to make it so that you can make really beautiful avatars and mm -hmm. um, you don't necessarily have to be uh, a full-time avatar creator to make a really great avatar i mean and people have used bone deformation systems i think in other games as well uh, you know black desert the sims those kind of things um, a lot of those use bone deformation you know you can We'll, we'll start you off, we're going to try and start you off with a really beautiful avatar, and um, hopefully people will make really beautiful avatars. If you want to yeah. make a really broken looking avatar, you can do that too, but uh, but I think um, presets is, is something that's going to be great. Right. And just to expand on that, one of the things that we want to expand with is that you can sell face presets as a its own thing so if you're not interested in selling a full body avatar you can also just sell like face face presets that other people can buy and then put under um, full avatar body yeah so a lot of stuff a lot of stuff coming we got a few months we're working really hard to get it in we don't have we're getting you know time times are coming along um uh and um yeah so stuff, stuff's going along um mm -hmm. What's Ooh. you have the agenda? I'm in VR as yeah. well. I don't have. Uh, I love being in VR in this meeting because I can. I'm very uh, mode of talker. I think. Is, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I'm back, so I can pull something up. Yes. What, what do we just so cover? Think, so we just covered um, some of the upcoming features and some of the post V1 features. Okay. Yeah. So Where we're going? Guys, okay. So now we can do reference files in the creator program. Can we cover that? Yes, I can cover that. So, um, as, uh, oh, I can hear some noise. Okay. So, as I mentioned um, last week, uh, we're gearing up to give you the reference files sooner. Um, so, we're, we're gearing to release after 2.0 um, as a feature, um, you know, early September. So, ideally, at, at the very least, you want to give you the new reference files around early August um, so that, you know, as creators, you can start um, playing around with a new skeleton, updating your new assets against a new skeleton, um, be prepared so that once we release the um, new avatar system on day one, on early September, um, you're, you can easily put in your, your assets in the marketplace um, if you choose to. Um, and as part of that, um, we want to start a creator program um, which is very similar to the to what we did when we rolled out Marvelous Designer support um, last year, um, which is you know we'll extend to you creators um, a support system where you can submit your items to Linden Lab so that we can test your assets within Sansar. Because unfortunately, um, while you already have the reference file, you won't be able to test um, test and upload those assets into Sansar um, until we release it in September. So you know in that time frame between August and September. Um, if you choose to, you can submit your assets to us and we can test it out, try it out in Sansar and then give you feedback on, you know, what, you know, if something went wrong, it went smoothly, you know, if things need to improve in terms of, you know, things are poking out here and there in terms of clothing or maybe the, the custom avatar. But that's it. Um, um, as for rolling that out, um, as you know, once we get the um, to the point that we can give you the reference files, um, we'll start opening up the, the location or the sign up sheet where you can start or you know, submitting those um, those asset files that you've created, and then from there we can you know kind of start that whole feedback going on uh, and working with you creators to get your assets ready in time for launch um, of After 2.0.
Um, let's make sure people are putting questions in here. Um, yeah, and I think we have a we have a bunch of questions from Discord that we collected yesterday. Um, why don't we go through those? first and then go through the questions that are coming in your nearby chat today uh, i'm sure there are a lot of redundant questions did we cover the entire program and the reference files yes okay <clears throat> did we want to talk about the content that will uh so the, for the content that for the content that will break um i believe sean already mentioned those earlier so i may me to reiterate you know what we're seeing is the assets that we see that will break a lot will be the rig clothing you know the rig hair um custom avatars but items that will not break will be you know, accessories marvelous and marvelous designer clothing and emotes um so that's like a, a recap of what was said earlier those ones are going to get automatically updated they yep. might not be perfect but they're gonna they're gonna work um so um, it's hard to make them perfect but yeah um there's a lot of other questions here which is great um yeah, but yeah, uh, Dave, we have Dave, a lot. Maybe we should just take a quick second. And Dave and Paolo, Z, did you have anything you wanted to add as like baseline before we did Q and A? I'm good. Uh, nope. Let's see what questions come up. Uh, yeah, nothing from me. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> let me do all the talking, guys. I mean, geez. Sorry, I was. Right. To, uh, there's, a, there's a big echo uh, from the conversation happening near Kara and I that was coming through the product meetup, and I wanted to knock it out. Um, okay. Thanks so, for that. Yeah. I had to uh, leave the computer for a second. So where are we? So um, we're about to start Q&A. Okay. Um, it, <coughs> <coughs> so um, we're going to go through the Discord questions that we collected yesterday. Um, and uh, we're going to start with Vasay's questions because uh, he, he put them there first. So um, Vasay is asking, uh, will there be support for blend shapes? And if these have been answered already, let me know. I've had to leave, leave the computer uh, a few times. So. So our current avatar, I mean, current custom avatars don't support blend shapes. Um, our current avatar does support blend shapes, but it's very limited in terms of what you can do. And it's, it's very, we, we, we didn't do it in the best way. And it's kind of rigid in terms of the blend shapes that we use. We are supporting blend shapes on the new uh, custom avatar. We have, a, we have a list of them. So you can speak to some of them, you know, things like um, things that are difficult oh, you, you, to do. You mentioned that wrong. You said custom avatar and that's not correct. Uh... We're supporting blend shapes on our internal avatars, not the custom avatars. Right. Well, so, so, so one sec. So I may have spoken, spoken clearly, but I don't remember what I said. But so Z is working on, for our avatar, uh, the new avatar 2.0, blend shapes, blend shape support. Um, so things that are difficult to do with the bones. So things like, you know, eye shape. Eye shape is tough. Um, uh, you know, uh, or some other ones like you know, lip, lip shape, also a little tough, you know, like Cupid bow, that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're kind of doing a refresh on how we do importing of, of blend shapes. And we're, we're looking to make it so that custom avatars can also then support those blend shapes. It's probably not going to be part of 1.0, sorry, it's probably not going to be part of our first release, but something we're working towards is to, to make it really easy to import blend shapes for custom avatars. So... Um, that's something we're working towards, and we're doing this kind of refresh on our tech on that side to, to make it so we can do our own blend shapes better. And so that's what we're looking at. Yep. Okay, so um, Vasay's next question is, uh, will joints match Avatar 1.0? Z, oh. do you want to take this one? Cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's no big. I mean, part of the problems with Avatar 1.0 is that uh, the skeleton wasn't built really well for bone deformation at all. And we had to rejitter pretty much every single aspect of the skeleton to make it yeah. look a lot better with bone deformation. So there will not be a match. I mean, you might be able to see some matches like, hey, the spine still uses three main yeah. core joints. You know, there's that type yeah. of matching. But in reality, you might as well just consider them like uh, different things. Uh, right. You're looking at the possibility of, say, remapping old skeleton, new skeleton. You can totally do that through uh, any 3D package. Like um, my uh, 3 Studio Max or Blender, uh, if you know how to do it, you can totally take the old skeleton and force it into the shape of the new skeleton. And, you know, your custom uh, avatars uh, would uh, go along with that. But, of course, you'll get mesh and texture stretching, which then, you know, if it was, if the, if you had the original custom avatar isn't that complex, it might be okay, actually, if you do it that way. Yeah. And, and then maybe with some little bit of a UV and texture uh, uh, fixing, uh, that you, that's a good way to uh, get your old stuff uh, close to the new stuff. 
you know so the big thing is also there's just a lot less joints in the new skeleton you know it's like 60 70 bones less so it's a lot less bones the big thing is like if you hadn't skinned the face before or, or, or anything like that like the robot avatars things like that where they're kind of skinned to particular bones they might still like you put them in the 3d three you put them in the maya you put them against the new skeleton they might you know be pretty close and so um yeah mm -hmm. That's what, yeah, one uh, thing, uh, maybe I'll just add in addition to this. Uh, one thing we will be providing with the Ava 2.0 is uh, multiple tiers of skeletons you can use. That will make things even simpler, uh, where we have the full skeleton, but we, all, we will also have a mid-tier one and then a really low-tier one that makes it more compatible. So you have even more choices. If you have a very simple, like, for example, that Game Boy avatar we see about, that doesn't require our full skeleton. I can use the super low a low tier like a mix of support yeah. skeleton and uh, it's, it's basically less bones to deal with if you don't want to deal with them no. yeah. cool all right what's our next question all right all right next we have uh will we be able to scale and move the bones which i believe we answered yeah so uh that's what the bone information is trying to do is to, to move and scale those bones we're going to start with the face and then move on to the body um and as we do that we're going to be looking at allowing for those pre-morphed custom skeletons so i don't think anybody's pointed out um that the uh the morph skeleton bones are a that's a separate skeleton from the animation skeleton um, yes so uh, it's not clear if um you guys will ever be exposed to the morph skeleton. It's got what three hundred something bones in it. Z. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 uh, there's actually two tiers of skeletons. One's internal for actual deformation work, and one that's uh, being exposed to users. Uh, the the, more, the one that's actually set up for the morph is very, very complex and very, very high. It's almost four hundred bones actually. Uh, so that that one's purely for deformation purposes only, not for animation. Right. Right. Uh, so when you talk about stretching and scaling um, the uh, the morph bones, uh, that's not going to do stuff like make your arms longer. Uh, the stuff that uh, Stretch was talking about for making your arms longer would be something that you do external, uh, externally and import it. You're very soft, Dave. I don't know if everybody heard you, but... Uh, 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 is, are you in a broadcast mode? Um, I don't know. Make sure Dave is being broadcast in Palo. I'm not sure who's in charge of that. All right. All right. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. So next we have uh, Archer's questions. Uh, will you update the reference avatar files in Marvelous Designer? Yes. <laughs> Great. We have to. We really have to. Great. Have okay. to. So that's happening. Okay. Then. Uh, couple of follow-up questions will there be a massive poke through fix um nose poke through ears bottom waist pubic area etc so we we just did a kind of refresh on the hidden surface removal sorry we just kind of did a little refresh on the hidden surface removal um which hopefully is was a little better i don't know is there temperature in the room i don't know did that did that help some um, it's getting better it's getting a lot better yeah. So hopefully it's better. But that's still where issues. <laughs> there's still issues. That's where that's where I think we need to do it. I mean, it's 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 a tough problem. We're going to keep trying to improve. Um, you know, some things work, not work. It's it's tough. Um, yeah, I have to point out that uh, the problems with uh, the poke through is mostly on crouching. I see. Yeah, crouching is is a tough pose. Uh, I'm looking here for poke throughs here. Ooh, sorry, well, I sent through you. Um, you know, a lot of the pokes are really very anything. dependent on the weights. So yeah. if we're going to get a new avatar with yeah. new weights, uh, it's going to be different. It's going to be a whole yeah. It, it, it might be it might be different. It's going to be different, but it's also going to be the same baseline problem. And a lot of the the poke through problem comes from from two things. So one is the weights. So like Marvel's designer, for instance, we're doing that automatic skinning. So the weights aren't perfectly matched to the skin. Um, now, in the hidden surface removal works in the A-pose, so if it, it, the idea is that if you can't see it in the A-pose, you can't see it in the runtime. But that's it's tough because uh, you have things like, you know, you're wearing a sleeved shirt. At that border, you might be able to see inside the sleeve 
a little bit. And so we have to keep those triangles there. But then as you morph, you deform that your your bicep, uh, they might poke through a little bit on the end of that sleeve. And that comes from the, the skin weights not matching up, where the, the shirt skin weights are slightly different than the arm skin weights. And even if they were perfect, the triangles would have to be perfect, too, to not get any poke through. If you had a triangle seam subdividing the like a triangle seam on the avatar's skin subdividing the um the clothing triangle like a full clothing triangle that when that morphs that that edge that triangle edge could still poke through the the flat triangle of the clothing and so you'd have to get those to line up too so even if we had right. the skinning in place along with the but, that in place so it, it's a tough problem so there is things they can do with marvelous designer um, and that has to do with smaller pattern pieces. They should yep. set, set the particle count lower. Also, um, people tend to make things really tight in Marvelous Designer. And if yeah. it's too tight under the arm, it's going to clip under the arm, no matter yeah. what Seancer does. Yeah, so those things are tough. Um, we are, one thing we'd like to support, which might help with some of this stuff, and it's probably not coming in the short term, is to allow for thick cloth from Marvelous Designer. So right now you get Marvelous Designer clothing, it's, it's uh, triangle thin, right? It's like two-sided shader, one triangle thick. But if we can allow for some thickness in the cloth, we we keep the we keep the the um, the clothing from Marvel's designer at four millimeters from the body. But if you can make that a little thick, push it down into the body a little bit, then hidden surface removal could actually do a better job of determining what's hidden, and you wouldn't necessarily get those same. Um, you'd still get a little bit of the the edge kind of stuff but that might help a little bit something we're looking at supporting and i know that the render team wants us to support because i think it's a little more, more performant um and so um something we're something we're looking at so you know, i just want to say that um to anyone worried about poke through uh, i mean unless your topology matches exactly with the clothing uh that's the only way to never exactly. have poke through exactly. so uh, what's happening here with hidden surface removal and all that stuff is great, uh, but again, it can't all be perfect. Yeah, so and, doing our best though. So. And when things get decimated too, sometimes you bring stuff out of Marvelous Designer that looks like it will function, and if it doesn't quite, but yeah, there's there's a lot of <laughs> lot of factors. You know, LOD on top of that too. So if you move farther away from the person, you might you know the those lower polygons will exhibit that same kind of subdivision problem I talked about, where you have different places where the triangles are on the clothing versus the the body. And as you you get further away, that poke through might be a little bit more. Uh, obvious, but hopefully you're further away, so you don't really notice because you're really small. So, but yeah, there's just a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of factors in poke through. Yeah, I just saw yes. the uh, Twitch question um, from Ms. Bella uh, about MD particle distance. Doesn't it reset it on import? And yes, we don't we don't respect whatever particle yeah. distance you set. And Part designer. particle distance is 15 millimeters, is what we do. I'm pretty sure 15 millimeters, right, Dave? Um, I don't remember the number off the top of yes, my head. Yes, 15, 15 millimeters. Um, 15 was kind of what we picked to be performant enough. Like, we didn't want, like, if you if you take something and you make it 5 millimeters, it basically, like, on an, it might work great on your computer in Marvelous Designer, but on lower end computer or whatever, it just drags Sansar to a halt in terms of performance in that character editor when people try and wear it. So we had to kind of pick a baseline that was pretty good. Now, one thing I'd like to do is make it so that if you are, if you have something higher than 15 millimeters, I'd like us to respect that. That way it's actually cheaper for us. Like you, you use 20 millimeters, 25 millimeters, you have a big skirt or, or something that didn't have to have such close particle distance. We should, we should get that savings. And so one thing I'd like to do is for us to support that, but um, that it's something sense. we need to work with Marvelous on. I um, before uh, we continue, I know there's a lot of interjected questions here, but we have a ton of questions to go through. So um, I know that sometimes we have time to sort of do follow-up questions immediately and, and that kind of thing. But, um, but let's, let's go ahead and just do it a little differently this time. And if we have time left over, then we can, we can have those other questions. Um, okay. But, uh, and stretching care of the quicker we can answer the questions, the better as well. Um, all right. So... Um, I know. I know you're trying to. I know. I know. There's a balance here. We want to answer so things fully, stretch. but uh, we will, there's also a. Ton I'll of stand other here for two hours and just talk about this all day. I'm actually are willing to listen. Yay, That's fine stretch. with me. Um, okay, but uh, 
I know Avatar 2.0 is a top priority probably for you guys, but is there a possibility to add an update system for the clothes in the store? Yes, I can talk about that. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. All right, sweet. Yeah, so um, I think we talked about an upgrade system in the last week as well, and the last few product meetups, actually. And I think I mentioned in the past that we were going to do a code redemption system as a, like a hacky way of doing an upgrade system. Um, I think we did a little bit of like a more investigation, and I, we are thinking about not going with a code system anymore. So in order to upgrade your item is or um, we've come up with a couple of solutions. Um, some of them um, may take a little bit longer to build. Um, some of them may be a little bit hacky, but a little bit faster um, in terms of giving that capability to you. So one of the things that we are thinking about is just utilizing the same upgrade system that we have currently available for scripting. So if we, exp we you know, we are thinking about exposing that to after, you know, after clothing, after, you know, any kind of after looks items so that, um, I think the way it works is that from the inventory, you would um, associate the new item with the um, the listing page, and so that the listing page on the marketplace will point to that new item that you have associated with it. Um, so that would mean that you wouldn't have to relist your item uh, as a new listing, and you can just keep uh, updating on the current page that you have. So that's one solution that we are thinking about. Um, another one that we are thinking about, which is a little bit faster to get, get in your hands, would be to expose hidden listings. Um, hidden listings is basically having a listing that's um, not publicly, that's not going to be a published page on the grid so that if people are searching, they won't see it. But if you give the link to somebody, let's say, you know, for the creators who are interested in giving an upgraded version to, you know, users who have purchased an asset that was broken, um, you can send a link to the user and then they can download the item from that specific link. Um, it's going to be a new listing, of course, uh, but uh, you can control like who you want to share that link to. So that's some of the things that we talked about. Um, next, do you want to add any other ideas that we have currently um, in terms of the upgrade system? I think that more or less covers it. Uh, just yeah. that uh, we're we're talking through all the options, and mm -hmm. we definitely know that that's a strong need, and we're going to try and get something um, soon as we can. It may not be for the initial uh, launch of Avatar 2.0 exactly, but we're going to yes. follow up with it as soon as we can. Yes, that's great. So that's some, um, yeah, that's great. it. Uh, so Tina asked, uh, will the max try count for custom avatars, uh, will that be changing? That's also Ravioli's question. So let's knock out two questions with one answer. So that's something we haven't really locked down on, but it is something that we are considering um, what to do with that. And just a little bit more further down the line, um, there's something that we are talking about internally. Um, it's not going to be part of the after 2.0 rollout, but maybe later further down the line. Um, I think in the past we've talked about a system where, um, I think we call it a triangle weight system, where you know we'll give you an unlimited, let's say, 100,000 100, triangle counts, and you can just fill that up and then not put a cap on any clothing item so that you can, let's say, if you want to have like a 50,000 triangle <laughs> dress, you can do that. Um, but it will be on the end user to choose, like, well, do I want to wear this 50,000 triangle dress, you know, and kind of cut my um, limit, item limit in half, um, you know, it's up to the user. So that's one of the things that we are talking about. Um, it's a little bit more complex. So um, that is something we'll definitely talk with you creators um, more as we kind of get more deeper into that system. But that's something that we are looking into to kind of also open up your creativity and not limit you with a certain like triangle count, whether it's for clothing, for custom avatars or accessories. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Medhu asks, will all animation break with Avatar 2.0? So we're trying to make it so it doesn't, um, like I said, we're doing this runtime retargeting work. Um, we're, we're, we're testing that out now. Um, we don't have any results to show quite yet, but we're hopeful that that's going to make it so that the current animations can be retargeted to the new skeleton. And, and a lot of the animations, like I said, are, are on the store. They're related to like most of the core bones. So things like the, the the body the the main body bones obviously we're going to have main body bones from the new skeleton things like the hands the hands aren't really changing um and so um we we're hopeful that that's going to you know transfer over pretty well with the with the runtime retargeting 
Uh, I will add and say that, you know, like any automated system is, is not perfect, right? So if you yeah. really, really care about really detailed information, you have animation and you don't want all that stuff to be lost, uh, having your own retargeting work inside of your 3D app of choice would probably be the best option and then re-uploading that stuff. It's going to make it so you have things that are like, like I said, like dances and stuff, I think are going to look good. Like the, the generic poses where people are lying down and stuff, I think are look 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 pretty good if you have something like eating an apple where that hand needs to be right at the mouth that might be a little off uh, you know the, the hand might go a little to the left or the right or down or up because that's how those retargetings work you know we, the bone length changes the the angles between the bones change a little bit but for the dances and things i think a lot of those are going to look look fine so we're going to be testing it out and we'll, we'll update you guys on the results as we do that testing so Okay, um, Snow asked, when uh, Avatar 2.0 is released, will we be able to update store listings for lookbook items so we can replace existing avatars in the store with new versions that use the 2.0 skeleton without having to delete the original listing and creating a new one? I, I think that's in line with the upgrade system we talked about earlier. So one thing that we want to avoid is to upgrade an item to a user's lookbook directly because um, we see that as just a griefing factor because the, you know, whoever it is can send the wrong file, a different file entirely. And we wouldn't want to replace the old version because we see a use case where some users may want to keep the older version. Um, of course, in this case, they can't really keep the broken assets, but uh, if, you know, in the, in the future for other upgrade purposes, uh, we wouldn't want the user user's current inventory item to be replaced with a new one. So the idea is if a new item is re-delivered, a new version of the item will be sent to the lookbook, but the current, the, the old version will still be in their inventory and it's up to the user to delete that if they want to. Um, so I guess the answer, short answer is um, it will not be, it will not update the lookbook currently. And currently the solutions we have so far for a, for a faster solution to give you an upgrade system is uh, you know, won't send the item directly to the user's inventory. So it'll be it'll be on the end user to choose to download it from the store. Okay. Um, the next question is: I'd like to know exactly what will break and not break with respect to already created clothing when we move from one to two. I think we've talked about that a little bit. Okay. The, the MD clothing is going to be. The great part of MD clothing is it does what it does. You know, you put it on something, it simulates, it pops out. We're going to have this MD scaling translation thing that we're working on. So you can hopefully you know, scale it up and then move it around to get it to a better fit. And um, But rig stuff, it's mostly the rig stuff. So rigged custom avatars, rigged clothing, rigged hair. That's harder to transfer over because we have it's there's that auto skinning problem. And there's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of problems with it. And so we've just decided to... to that the creators are the best ones to know how to how to how to make their creations look great. If we auto do something with it, it's not going to look what people want. I think so. That was that was the the, the, the thing there. So okay, cool. Um, so let's ask. Uh, at the last meeting, the Avatar team has said they will release new Avatar reference files a month early as a soft test. They give us the files. We do our thing and send it back to the lab for the developers to test, like what we did when MD rolled out. My concern is if we do it like this, some important aspects or issues will go unnoticed by the test team. Yeah. As a creator, I rig in, in world, tweak, fix, and repeat yeah. until I get a perfect item. By yeah. us just creating, rigging, and handing off, we won't find all the important issues. It's true. Um, I mean, we have a we have a little bit of a problem in that we we don't have a beta grid set up, and so uh, it's difficult for us to to give to give you guys access to to the work in progress and and the data that we if you we're constantly as we're developing these systems, we're constantly changing stuff internally. We're breaking our own content as we're developing formats for things change, and we have to upload our own assets over again because you know the, the old format didn't didn't work and or we we had a bug in our code and this is during development and so it's difficult for us to, to give you guys that access um it might be frustrating if we did since we're constantly breaking stuff and then trying to get stuff to work um i agree it's it's a little it's not the ideal mm -hmm. flow um it's something that you know we're gonna try we're gonna try and, and we're gonna we're gonna get that feedback and we're gonna do our best with it so okay um, next, uh, 
Tiki asks, can you add some extra free bones not involved in movements and skeletons so we can use uh, those to make creative emotes? So for like, I'm guessing it's for like custom custom avatars then? Bones that, because if they were free bones that weren't rigged in our base avatar, then nothing, you could move them, but they wouldn't affect the skin at all. Um, if these are for custom avatars, I guess you'd want like some kind of bone you could, you could translate here. Um, the, that's not the plan right now. The plan is not to have those extra bones. What we'd like to do for extra bones, and I think I've talked about this in the past, is to make it so that you can attach extra skeletons to the avatar so you could have a, a tail and that tail could then wiggle around with its own animation and it wouldn't necessarily have to we don't have to bake those animations into the into the base skeleton because we it's kind of a it's kind of a, a no-win situation to some degree like we'd have to keep adding bones people would have new use cases um you know you don't the dress bones they they're not what we want the the the, te the ponytail bone i wish it was this way or that way or wish there was two um you know it's kind of a, a treadmill there so i think that the best thing for us is to allow it so that you can attach additional bones to the avatar and, and do stuff with that so that's that's where we'd like to go with that right okay um kung fury uh will avatar 2.0 have an offset uh, from the ground option to allow high heels with custom avatars. It's pretty important for the fashion market. If not, how long until high heels in Sansar? Mm. Talked about high heels a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> something we need to, to put, put more work into. Um, it's not in the plan right now to have an offset. Um, it's something we can explore. Um, but one thing is, one thing with high heels, especially, is that with the current animations, if you put high heels on them, they kind of look funky. Like, it's not going to be what you want, really, I don't think. Um, we need to get that the ability for you guys to replace the walk and run animations, especially to get high heels to look really good. Um, so uh, that's that's what we're... <laughs> I, don't have a, I don't have a date or a time, I'm sorry. Right, yeah. Hover height. I mean, hover height is interesting. So, like adding adding a little bit to the animation route, the, the, is something that's possible. And maybe that's maybe that's what we can do in the short term potentially. Um, adding a little extra to the route, making it so foot IK adds that little extra in, so you can kind of then move the feet down with uh, with custom avatars. So you, the the rigging is going to be a little funky when you run and stuff. Though, like if you run and that foot goes down like this, if you've if, if our foot is rigged flat like this, um, I'm looking at this like my leg, uh, this is my leg and this is my foot. If when you're idling, your leg foot's like this and then you run and the foot moves like this, it's gonna be look like that for our custom avatar. If you start the foot down like this and then when the foot runs, you're gonna break the ankle the opposite direction. And so when that run happens, so little tricky on the hover height because that extra little bit there is going to start breaking your ankles if you move too fast but um well uh could you not um give like make a whole separate set of animations just for high heels now, we'd have to do that that's possibly i'm not worried about high heels but i'm sure it's been brought up so much i know it seems like you know, we should just, yeah, I mean, we should just, we'd have to just, just like check a box that says <laughs> high heel animations, high heel. locomotion high heels. That's potential. That's potential. Um. <laughs> okay. Um, Chris asked uh, from Twitch, will the situation with cartoony faces be the same with Avatar 2.0? I can't rig my eyes or face with my avatars right now. Just a simple jaw flap. My duck avatar has a duck build that with the current avatar, I can't rig. Will 2.0 help with that? Z, do you want to take that one? I mean, yeah, I mean, I could take that one. I mean, that's uh, more to do with uh, uh, basically allowing people to change uh, to uh, to deform the skeleton before uploading. That, that's what yeah. that's about. Yeah, so. This is kind of like the pre pre morph skeleton I was talking about, where you could stretch out the bones of the face to make your duck bill. Uh, before you import it, um, and then just rigging like flapper kind of stuff. Like Z had been talking about having lower bone count skeletons that you could import against and, and rig against, and then we would fill in the reference pose for the rest of the bones, that kind of thing. Which we started to do with those partial animations, and um, it seems to be working okay. So um, 
there might be something we do there in terms of pretty morph skeleton for custom avatars. Yeah, for sure. Like uh, uh, when it comes to like the pre morph stuff, like uh, of course, like the closer you stick to the uh, default uh, skeleton, uh, the better your animations will look because that's what yeah. the animation is based off of. And the more right. crazy you go, not that you can't do it, but it'll start looking weird when it starts animating. And retargeting will get you close, but like again, anything that's automated, uh, right. it, it won't make it 100% perfect again. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, um, Bella asks, um, can we get a second pose in there? The default avatar resting pose. We only have one and things look differently because the avatar doesn't walk around like that. That's an MD question. Um, so you mean like the A pose? Like yeah, this pose? I guess so. Um, I think it's the, the normal pose when you're, when you're creating something in MD. I think that might be... Well, it, I mean, says it's, it says it's an MD question, so... Yeah, I mean, it, MD, you can say, for instance, uh, we could move the skeleton and then allow you to manipulate the clothing against it, right? So you could, like, pull the arms up and then do your, do your stuff against it. I, but we still need to rig that to do the auto-rigging. We need to rig against the, um, the T-pose the bind pose of the animation. So we were going to be doing that auto ring against that. So that's kind of the reason we didn't allow for that manipulation. Um, you know, playing an animation, choosing a frame of an animation, is we thought that it would maybe be deceptive in terms of how it's going to look at the end. Whereas, because we're going to end up going back to the T-pose to do the skinning, and that's where, like, insertion removal is going to happen, all this stuff. So if you, if you had it looking good in the arms up pose, it might not look as good once we do the auto rigging. So we wanted to kind of give you a little more like what you see is what you get. Um, but it's something we could think about. I mean, that's that's the reason we did it. But then it's just a question. Okay. Is that it? It would be nice on the same topic uh, when we get our reference files, especially facial animation. If we mm -hmm. could get all of the facial deformations or uh, actual animations themselves in our fa in our files, mm -hmm. that way we could check what we're doing against those animations. Yeah, I, I think mean, we don't. A pose of each one, something. So I think the do. problem is that we don't actually have facial animation poses. Right. We're using uh, we're using like a. Couldn't bot. you like snapshot a pose in there? I mean, yeah, I guess we could snapshot some poses that come out of um, the. We do procedural face animations, basically, right? right. So, like, as I'm talking, those happen. So you, you would want us to like talk, take a bunch of snapshots of those, and then. You guys could check your, your rigging and stuff, I guess? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, that's definitely a possibility. I mean, it's, it's a, possible. No, it's right, a lot of work. It's package. a bit of work, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> to rest the, you know, it's not that. We've talked about actually doing some sort of like animation exporting. So you could like, I could like record me doing this and then make that an emote. Um, if I, you know, do my do my stuff in VR and then record that out as an emote. It's a similar system, I guess, where you'd be recording the face uh, animation, getting that out. But The more you give us ahead of time in the reference files, the easier our workflow is. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I mean, uh, I, can, I can look into the possibility of uh, uh, not Maybe. requiring the tech side to, do, uh, to export some additional poses. That's just additional pose packages that people can import and, and key up if they want to. I can look into that. What about like um, making speech graphics into the character editor? Would that help? Like, because if the problem is with speech graphics and the position of the, I don't know how how the face looks overall. If we could test that out in the character editor while you're setting up the, it's possible. So you would like talk, and then uh, speech graphics would. Um, you could like talk in the character editor, and your mouth would move. So you go into like, that's a cool idea. Face move. It's a, it's a cool idea. But there's also like a default stand that has facial animation in it, like the smile that smile. In the oh, we do have we do have a smile. We do have a blink yeah. that we have in the uh, that we use in the character editor to do those. Um, we could give those as reference poses for sure. I mean, that's we give you. I think one of the files we gave out with reference poses had a bunch of animations in it or poses in it, right, Z? So you could check yeah, clothing. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Yeah. For we get that face. We get that smile. Yeah, yeah. We get that smile. Yeah. For those, we can do that pretty easily. Uh, like for those uh, face poses, we can do uh, pretty easily, um, for sure. Sure. 
Yeah, but I want to separate those out into a separate package so that people who are just downloading the initial skeleton are bombarded with a bunch of stuff uh, oh. uh, that don't know that they might not know what to deal with. So. <clears throat> Um, we're officially over time, um, but uh, I imagine that if folks are willing to stay around and ask and answer questions, then uh, you know everybody's okay with that. So, uh, sans our staff, it's up to you. Are there are there critical questions that people have? Any other questions yes. that people want to be answered? I'm I'm here. Um, so, okay. Are there are there more questions from the list? There's uh, not on the list anymore, but there's a couple coming in. Uh, Loki on sure. Twitch asks, uh, are there any plans to improve full body tracking so I can lay down with Avatar 2.0? Um, if that, yeah, I, so I, that sitting down and laying down were things that we had tested, and I'm getting feedback from you. I'm uh, oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah, it's diff distracting. Um, we should just fix that. It seems like it's a, it's, a, it's a bug on our side. One thing that we're going to do with Avatar 2.0 is we're refreshing. We have to refresh the speech, the, the face uh, procedural animation. So hopefully that'll look a little better, and we're hoping. So you get a better, you know, procedural talking. Um, and then the other thing is we're going to have to redo the IK setup that we have for for full body IK. And so I'm hoping that fixes a lot of our problems, especially for the male when you go like put your arms up, you know, you get like a kind of a strange back bend and, and stuff like that. Then I'm hoping that the second pass we do will improve the IK. Um, that being said, for those things, it probably isn't going to affect the sit down and lay down. That seems like something we just need to fix and, and um, we'll, we'll have to do some testing on. So, uh, okay. so uh, we don't have the ability to message anyone other than our friends. We can't exchange messages with our buyers. Um, are you guys going to do anything about that? Um, it's something we need to look into. One thing that we thought about as a way to let the buyers know that an update is available is, is via email. So like some kind of automated system where if you updated your item, your listing, um, an email will be sent out to all of the buyers who have purchased that item so that they know that, hey, there's something new come get it um, from the page. So that's, that's what we're looking to right now. But we can certainly look into some kind of uh, better communication system via chat um, or something else, what intents are. Okay, um, from, from Twitch. Will I be able to scale stuff like hands on custom avatars? I currently have to shrink my hands to match the rig. This is very similar. I had to get out of VR, so I'm, I'm back in desktop. But um, this is very similar to this is basically what we're talking about with pre-morph skeletons. So you you take our rig and you you morph it, and then you skin against that, and then you import it. And so it seems like that's a very useful feature, to people. It seems like that's something we should really focus on because a lot of questions have been coming from that in terms of how do I um, morph my skeleton and and uh, and make my custom avatar against that. It seems like something people really want. So that's something we should really focus on. So with object structure copy paste, can someone copy and paste a script from a product they bought? I wish Signal was here. He just, he worked on that feature. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, I, I believe the answer is that they can if you sold it as a full permissions object. Um, it does, I do know that it does check uh, the licensing terms of the object uh, that they bought. So uh, if you have uh, locked down um, the fields on the item, then they wouldn't be able to uh, uh, copy them or paste into that object. Okay. Thanks. Nice. I think that's it. Anybody have a question that we missed? I'm looking on four different chats right now. I think, I think we've got all of them. All right. Thanks, everybody. That's our uh, Avatar 2.0 meetup. Uh, if you have uh, more questions, of course, you can come to me, and I'll, I'll pass them on to the team. Um, and uh, otherwise, it was nice seeing you all, and uh, we're done for today. Thank you, you all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Bye, Twitch.
Oh, Loki, it's just a little too late. Actually, Stretchy still here? Um, we got one yeah, more question. Yeah. Sure. Will there ever be a feature where we can quickly send objects to friends instead of going through the store? You mean gifting objects? Um, I think um, that was answered in chat. Um, it's not currently planned, but it is something that we are we know is a common ask from the community, so we are looking to where it fits into the priority. We did talk about um, hidden listing, right? That would allow you to do that as well. Yes, yeah. So hidden I think, listing uh, would be a similar... Yeah, hidden thing. listing would be a similar thing. But I think what they... The, the real question was um, in terms of gifting objects. No, I know. I'm just yeah. saying you could you could make something for somebody and give it to them without everybody right, having it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So okay, they can certainly more, use that. Yeah. One more question. Uh, in the future, could I sell stuff on the store DRM-free with the original FBX files? Uh, the, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not yeah. sure. It's not. Uh, it's not a me question, but uh, it's Kara, I guess it's on yeah. you. But it's something we can look into. Yeah, it's something we can know. look into. Um, but I don't think we currently have plans um, to enable that. But it's something we can definitely look into. I think Solus, you were, you wanted to do something with clothing as well around that. I wanted to do. I wanted to sell the SAMD files, right. like mm -hmm. have my own web page and sell them so people outside. People in Sansar can download them. I just need to be able to let them download them, so they bring them back into Sansar, and then they can have their own stores and stuff. Where I just I would sell like full permission, but um, yeah, a lot of license involved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In kind of, um, terms of service, it's not allow um, reselling any of the Sansar items outside in a third party. Um, Marvel's designer, if, if um, I think is what Solus was looking into, mm -hmm. is especially a little bit tricky because um, that's. You know, we don't we don't own Marvelous Designer. We, it's also a partnership with the um, Pro 3D um, company, and you know, there's certain there's a certain but, agreement there, and right, which yeah. I understand and figure. Yeah. Um, but I do have like Aunt Galileo. What is that called? The it's like a wiki. The the guide. There is um, a guide, and I did. Yes, the user guide yeah. uh, thing in the form. In the user guide, I did put some of my templates on that with a Dropbox link so people can go there and bring them in is that not good either i mean i think as long as it's free it's, we should be good for now it's free uh, and yeah. it's strictly within sansar <laughs> yeah if it's within sansar some um, forums that should be fine um right. if it's also free um i think that that, that should be fine I, I, I can check the legal to double check but i know okay. that the biggest problem really is if you're selling the content um no. especially in a third party um, website but I don't mind like bringing in a, a bunch of basic mm -hmm. designs sure. that will fit the avatar for people to use that don't have marvelous designer. Yeah, that's great. That's more great. Yeah. Stores. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, Galileo, when you're done, can Vasai and I borrow you for a few minutes? Uh, oh, is it going to be fun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Well, if you don't resist. I guess if it's not fun, I don't have a choice. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Cora. I'll Kara. stay around here. Where do you need me to go? Bye. Um, Vasai? Bye, Twitch. <laughs>